Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome to another video. And before we get started, as always, I would just like to give a big thank you and big welcome to all my new subscribers. I mean, seriously guys, the amount of growth that this channel has gone through in such a short amount of time is nothing short than mind blowing. And I cannot believe it and I'm completely blown away. So everyone who's new out there, thank you. I really appreciate it. And everybody who's been leaving me comments, I try to read as many of them as I can and I'm, I try to respond to as many as I can. So please keep sending in the questions. Please keep leaving comments and stuff like that. Let me know about things and I'll do my best to answer them. Anyway guys, okay, let's get into today's topic. A question that I get asked a lot when talking to people about the Titanic and the entire disaster is if it was possible that some people could have actually still been alive inside the Titanic after she went underwater. So I thought I would take the time in this video to explain the science of how the Titanic sank and if it was possible for anyone to survive for a time after the ship had gone down. So in order to answer this question, we have to think about a couple of factors. Number one, we have to think about how the Titanic sank. We know that it took the Titanic about two hours and 40 minutes to go down from the moment she hit the iceberg. And we do know that she split in two. So those are two big factors right there. You see, the Titanic went down by the front and then the lower she got, the stern began to rise up. Now because of that, it gave the bow, the front of the ship, plenty of time to flood evenly. So when the Titanic broke in half, the bow was completely full of water, but the stern of the ship had a large amount of air still inside of the ship. And that also is a factor in trying to talk about if anybody could have been alive for a time after the ship had went underwater. You see, all of that air inside of the stern was a big reason why the Titanic didn't just drop at this late stage of the sinking. This is briefly before the Titanic broke in half. So at this point, the Titanic sinking actually slows down because due to the high angle, the water can't really progress anymore. So the back of the ship, which is still more or less 100% buoyant, is fighting the dead weight of the front of the ship, which is completely full of water. So this tug of war, so to speak, between the front and the back of the ship continued until the strain on the hull was too much and the Titanic couldn't take the strain anymore and the ship just broke in half. And at this point, due to the air inside, the stern settled back and began to float for a time, but it was massively structurally compromised due to the breakup, so at this point the stern began to rapidly sink. Now the next thing we need to talk about on this topic is how air pockets work. And as I said in that last clip, the stern settled back for a time because she still had a lot of air in it. And she began to rapidly sink because how fast she was going down and how structurally compromised she was. The flooding progressed really quick through the stern. It had no time to gently settle like the bow did. The front of the ship went down very slowly that it gave the water time to evenly distribute. But the stern did not have that luxury. Water was rapidly flooding in and then there were sections of the stern that air pockets could form. And we need to discuss exactly what air pockets are and how do they work. This picture is a basic analogy of what an air pocket is and how it works. Essentially an air pocket is a section of a hall or a room or something inside of a ship where water can't progress anymore due to the air inside keeping it out. So essentially, if you're inside of a sinking ship and you're just running and you see the water's coming up behind you and then there's a dead end right in front of you, you can't get out, there's no windows, there's no doors, there's nowhere for you to escape, well that also means that the air can't escape either. So as the water progresses, there's a chance that the air will actually stop the water from getting to you for a time. And so if that happens to you, you are essentially inside of an air pocket. This is a thing that happens sometimes in shipwrecks, and it's also a thing that people who rescue people from shipwrecks actually look for. We saw it in the 2012 Costa Concordia disaster. They were searching the ship for uh, air pockets and stuff like that, trying to find people. And believe it or not, there is even one case where a man actually survived inside of an air pocket of a sunken ship for almost three days. What you're seeing here is footage from a camera on one of the divers that was sent in to do the rescue mission, but after such a long amount of time, they assumed it was just a body recovery mission. But while this diver was exploring the shipwreck, this man who was in an air pocket reached out and grabbed him and showed that he was alive. This man had been alone in the dark in a ship underwater for almost three full days. Another reason why this was so incredible, as you can see from this picture here, his boat was upside down underwater at a depth of 100 feet. So he had been down at this depth in an air pocket alone and in the dark for three days before somebody came to rescue him. 
This picture is a better representation to the conditions that he was facing inside of the ship. As you can see, he is in the one tiny little space where there is a tiny air pocket, and all the spaces surrounding him are completely flooded. So he is inside the only habitable zone on this ship, alone and in the dark, 100 feet beneath the surface. I remember when that story happened, and when I heard about it, I couldn't believe it. And after they rescued him and got him out, some scientists looked at his air pocket and were trying to calculate how long, how long could he have survived in there. And based on the size of the air pocket and the water and everything and one man in there breathing, they calculated that he would have had just around two and a half, three days of air. So they barely got him out on time. And another thing is, what about carbon dioxide? You know, all humans uh, breathe out carbon dioxide and that's poisonous to us after a certain amount of time. Well, water absorbs carbon dioxide. So him being in there and having water at, his, at the foot of the room was actually absorbing the, uh, the carbon dioxide from him. And as far as drinking water, he had one can of Coke. So that's all he had in there. And it's just unbelievable that he survived. But what does all this have to do with the Titanic? Well, now that you have a basic understanding of how air pockets work, we need to talk about the other major factor in discussing air pockets, and that would be the pressure of the water surrounding the air pocket. So when comparing the Titanic to what happened to that man who went down with that little tiny ship, we have to talk about two things, depth and pressure. Now, we all have pressure on us right now. Pressure, there's air pressure on us right now that's around our bodies 24 seven, we just don't notice it. But we do notice a lack of pressure whenever we start to gain altitude, like how our ears pop on airplanes or we're climbing a mountain. The pressure around us is getting less, so our ears pop and we notice it. But now the ocean is a lot more dense and heavy than air. So the deeper we go, we have a lot more weight and a lot more pressure on us. Now, in the case of the man who was inside that shipwreck at 100 feet, 100 feet, while still the pressure is much greater than at the surface, it's not out of range of divers and the pressure isn't super, super extreme. So even though he was in a structurally compromised ship due to the sinking, it wasn't enough to cause any real, real damage to the ship's hull. Now, in the case of Titanic, the Titanic sunk, and it's not just a mere 100 feet. It's two and a half miles down. The pressure at that depth is something about like three tons per square inch. So three tons of weight. If you as a person were tried to go down to those depths without a submarine or something, you'd be crushed in a second. So this brings us back to what I was saying earlier about how the bow and the stern sank. You see, because Titanic's bow sank completely full of water, it didn't have any pressure acting on it. So it didn't matter how deep it went, because there was just as much water on the inside as on the outside, the pressure didn't make a difference in the Titanic's bow. However, the same thing can't be said for the Titanic's stern. Because the Titanic's stern sank so fast after the breakup, the Titanic's stern had a bunch of air pockets in it, and because it sank to such a deep depth, the Titanic's stern went through something called an implosion. I made another video about why the stern of the Titanic is in such bad shape today, so I'll post a link to that in the description below. But to summarize a little bit, the stern went through something called an implosion. An implosion is when the air pocket or the surrounding space inside can't hold back the water or the weight or the strain of the pressure on the outside. So the pressure builds up, builds up, builds up until finally the pressure can't take it anymore and the hull can't handle it and that space just gets crushed. They call that an implosion. So going back to the main question of this video, could anybody have been alive inside the Titanic after she sank? Well, in the front section, most likely not. The front section flooded very slowly, and any air pockets that could have formed most likely had time to escape. However, it's a little bit different with the stern. Due to how rapidly the stern went under after the Titanic broke in two, and we see evidence of it on the wreck, the stern had massive air pockets inside due to uneven flooding of the section of the ship. So there could have been some people alive inside of the Titanic stern, at the time the ship went under. However, they would not have been inside for very long. Around 30 seconds after the stern of the Titanic disappeared, the survivors on the surface felt and heard a very loud explosion, or implosion as we know now, and that was the stern of the Titanic breaking up on its way to the sea floor. So, at that point, all those air pockets inside of the stern were gone. So if anybody was alive when the stern went under, they wouldn't have been in there for very long. At the most, 10, 20, 30 seconds, before the implosion occurred and then that would have been it. There, they wouldn't have suffered or anything bad would have happened. It would just been a real quick instantaneous thing. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all learned something and found it interesting. But yeah, uh, guys, 
everything that's been going on with this channel and all the new subscribers we got, thank you all so much. I really cannot believe this. So thank you. And all the comments that you all have been leaving, I've really enjoyed reading them. And yeah, guys, just keep doing what you do. I really appreciate it. And if there's any other video ideas you want me to cover, please let me know below. I'll take a look at it. And yeah, guys, please hit that subscribe button and please give my video a like. All right, guys, you all take care out there. I'll see you in the next one.